This award represents my first 100 users on my software platform, and this video is going to be the start of a series showing you how I got there. And I'm also gonna be documenting my journey to my goal of 2,000 users by the end of this year. And I'm gonna show you the exact offers, strategies, and exact steps that I'm taking and documenting their results along the way. So if you wanna learn what it takes to build a SaaS company, this series is gonna be a must watch. Now, for the record, I should say that I'm not coding any of this software, right? I'm not a coder, I am not a developer. I'm actually white labeling this from a company called High Level. Those are the ones who gave me the award. You see, they have a very unique model where they build a set of software tools on basically a blank canvas and they allow us marketers to sell them and white label them as our own. But it's not just a simple rebrand though. Okay, again, like I said before, they give you a blank canvas and it's up to you, the marketer, to build your own frameworks and offers on top of their basic system. Think of it like white labeling either WordPress or Windows. WordPress and Windows really don't do a whole lot on their own. They pretty much just provide a container for you to put other software and other frameworks in to actually get some work and productivity done. And High Level does something similar. They provide me with an operating system, so to speak, and a framework and a container. I then put in my own sales frameworks, automations, and websites for my customers to use. Right now, I'm sitting at about 223 users, which is a little over 10% of my goal. However, I think this 10% is the hardest because of all the things that I had to learn just to get this far. So let's recap the journey and talk about how I got right here. Now, if you don't know me, I'm actually an ex-car salesman turned entrepreneur. Uh, back in 2017, though, I left the car business to start my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, and I built a car rental business that actually went under and failed right before the pandemic. And when we all went inside for a couple of months, I started selling stuff online. After all, I had to make money and everything was closed. So what I did was I actually started making videos and selling stuff as an affiliate because everybody was shopping online and everybody was actually scrolling TikTok at the time. Now, because I was in the car business, I was familiar with CRMs, but the CRM that the dealership used was $6,000 a month and well, that wasn't in my budget. So that's when I started getting actually exposed to sales funnels and more consumer-based CRMs. And I actually ended up finding ClickFunnels first, but I eventually then moved over to Kartra. And from early 2020 until about November of 2022, I used Kartra almost exclusively and I referred tons of people over there throughout those two years. You can even check out my full review on it over here. Now I had heard about High Level in the summer of 2022 and I was kind of messing around as a user on the platform, even though Kartra was supporting my main business, I was still referring people over to Kartra. However, I quickly realized that with High Level, I could actually rebrand it as my own and sell it and keep 100% of the revenue instead of getting a 40% commission from Kartra. After after all, when I was sending people over to Kartra, I was also coaching them and showing them how to set up a specific funnel framework. With High Level, I could rebrand it and preload all of the frameworks and save my customers a ton of time. Now, the trade-off to that was now I had to do my own customer service and I had to do my own tech support, but when you see what I figured out later on in the video, you'll see that it was well worth the trade. So now once I realized I could rebrand High Level and I could keep 100% of the revenue, I had to figure out how to launch this thing to the world. Now, when I actually launched Lead Vortex, I didn't really make a big deal about it. I launched Lead Vortex on January 1st of 2023 to my email list, again, rather quietly. At the time, I had an email list built up of about 5,000 clean contacts, and I had a following of about 100,000 on social media. I launched to my email list most specifically because they're the people who had the most know, like, and trust with me, and they would be the most forgiving customers. After all, I've been giving them value on social media for almost three years prior to launching this product. They were my OGs, and I can also count on them for giving me honest feedback because I had sold other products to them in the past, and they communicated well what they liked and what they didn't like, and it is something, again, I can build for my audience, and it's a good feedback loop so I can make those early iterations on the software. And time for some stats. Over the first two weeks, I think I sent seven or eight emails, and I got 38 users on my platform at the end of those two weeks. And the offer was that for $97 per month, they would get every single high level feature that was available. And also I would give them weekly coaching calls along the way to help them along in their business. Basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to provide them one with all of the knowledge and all the courses that I had created along with hands-on coaching and training. And then also I wanted to give them all of the tools that they were gonna need to implement what I taught them. Now I only launched with one plan and one offer because I wanted everybody on the same playing field, especially if there was only 30 people. I didn't wanna have people on different plans because I noticed in the past, if I had a higher and a lower plan, when everybody got together on live, if I was catering to the people with the higher plan, talking about uh, features that some of the people in the room didn't have, rather than inspiring them to go purchase the higher plan, they would get upset and they would actually check out and leave and I would lose business. I didn't want that. So what I did was I gave everybody everything, kept it all at the same price point, and that simplified not only the sales conversations and the sales messaging and also the, uh, the live calls, 
It also simplified all of the support. I only had to worry about supporting one plan instead of multiple. After the first two weeks and I got my first 38 users, I went quiet for three months. I did not talk about it on social media. I did not talk about it on my email list. What I wanted to do is I wanted to figure out three things. So the first two things that I had to get figured out, now that I had my 38 people say yes and actually swipe their credit cards and start trying my software, was onboarding and support. Now I'm gonna go over these kind of simultaneously because onboarding and support are very interdependent of each other. If you've got a really good onboarding process, you're not gonna have a whole lot of support. And if your onboarding is weak, people are gonna reach out with a lot of questions. And I've learned that these two areas are connected at the hip. And if you're unfamiliar, onboarding is the process of getting somebody set up on your software. Now with the high ticket agency type model that a lot of high level uh, SaaSpreneurs use, where the customer's paying them 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, maybe even $4,000 a month, uh, a lot of the high level agencies have a personalized one-on-one, -on -one. you hop on a Zoom call with somebody and they almost do the onboarding white glove, soup to nuts done for you. Because I'm at the complete opposite end of the spectrum at $97 a month, it doesn't make sense for me to manually onboard each person. So for me, I had to come up with a process for my customers to DIY the onboarding while also giving them a ton of support, but also being able to do 40 people at the same time. And I went through a couple of iterations if you wanna try this out. Now the first one here that I brought up on screen is actually, uh, I did a 12 day challenge. This was actually a white label that I bought. Uh, I'll put links to it down below. This came with a help desk snapshot that I still use today. I'll get to that later on in the video. But this one here, basically it's a 12 day challenge. There were 12 different uh, videos showing you how to get set up and how to use each section of the platform. They're white labeled, so it doesn't say lead vortex on it at all. But what I found out was this was very, very slow for the people that I was selling to. So I did a 14 day trial and it's a 12 day challenge. So people want to get set up and, and activated really quickly. And if you go to this one, there's a, there's a platform overview. You don't set up till day two. Then you're learning how to use the CRM. Then you're learning how to build a website. Four days go by, a lot of my people in my audience want to get the stuff up and running on day one. So this was actually scrapped pretty quickly. I thought it was okay because it slows people down, it slows the process, it gives it to them chunk by chunk, but this was ultimately too slow. Now the next iteration was my customized quick start guide. Now this is a very rudimentary copy. Uh, I kept the framework, uh, but this is actually now dead, so this is why there's a- uh... Hey, what's up everyone? You'll see that there's a video of me there showing people explaining the guide. And what I wanted to do at this point was just give everybody everything they would need to do click by click from day one, give it to them all at the same time. And what I found out was I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 videos here for people to complete. Some of these are 10 or 15 minutes long. And this was the next thing. So the idea behind this was you go through the start here guide. This will get everything set up. Then you want to put up your funnels and your websites. Then you want to get your email sequences and your contacts imported. And then if you're doing calendar, high ticket stuff, one-to-one -one Zoom selling, you could have that particular section of the software up and running. But what happened was someone would click over to here and then there would be a link. Uh, there would be a link of videos, all the types of videos, what you need to create. And I've also preloaded a lot of templates into their account. Like there was a lot. I, I think I preloaded like seven or eight different funnels, three or four websites. There was a lot of stuff that I preloaded into people's accounts. And all of these videos uh, will were directly, and all these videos were direct matching screen share with the stuff that I had preloaded because I was the one that made them. That was the other disconnect with the white label. Was the white label, the person who did the white label didn't have my framework so it wasn't lining up and I was getting a lot of people requesting support. So for instance, I would do this support video. Someone goes in there, clicks into the video. There would be a video kind of showing where to add your support video. And everything that I did in that video was directly uh, lining up with what was in their account. But the problem with this was that this was way too overwhelming. I gave too much, I went the complete opposite uh, end of the spectrum on the onboarding. I gave too many people too much on day one. People got overwhelmed. People said this is too hard. And people were actually canceling before their trial was even up. People were canceling. I think I had about three or four people cancel within four days of this actually going out and live. They were just like, this is too much. I can't do it. So the first iteration was too slow. This was too fast. Let me show you what the Goldilocks uh, onboarding process looks like now. And this is the onboarding process that's in place right now with Lead Vortex at the time I'm making the video. So I brought it up here on screen. It starts on the thank you page. All of your onboarding, your process starts right at the thank you page. This is the page that someone, once someone submits their credit card to start a trial, they land on this page here. And on this page, I give them explicit instructions on how to get logged in. 
because on the other two iterations, I was assuming that people would find the login email. They are not. So I gave them explicit instructions on the thank you page, what to look for, how to find it and how to get logged in, tell them how to get their password, how to respond their, their password, go through there. But the setup here is this is actually where I got it right with onboarding. Now, as you can see, as I scroll down, I still have all of the different sections of how to use all of the different parts of Lead Vortex. So I didn't take any training away, but what I've done is I found that happy medium between give them everything at the beginning and then draw out the quick start. So what I've done is I've actually got a quick start guide, which links over here. What this quick start guide now is just six videos showing them how to do the bare minimum of things to get an account that is up and live. I give them one simple two page funnel. I show them how to get their domain hooked up and I show them how to get their email hooked up so they can send an email. If I can get them to do those three things, I find that people tend to stick on average. And that's what I've done here in the quick start. I've got the welcome, which kind of shows people big picture what we're gonna be doing show them how to hook up their domain, uh, optional DNS access so we can go in and we can do some tech stuff on their end. Uh, we've got the funnel to get their lead funnel up, how to get emails. And then the final step is when I go direct them to the rest of the training. So now that they're set up, now that it's live, now they're kind of off the clock, so to speak, they could start going and onboarding at their own pace. This is what I found here that works. And this is actually what generates the fewest amount of support tickets. Now, speaking of support tickets, this was another process where I actually had to learn through several iterations that was really, really hard uh, to learn and it was painful. And I'm gonna give you what works now without going through all the pain. Now, my first iteration of help was just to email me. I told people, if you have a problem, email me, we'll figure it out. And boy, was that a freaking mistake. I was getting emails constantly because I had no documentation on how anything worked. And also I had no organization. I was just trying to work through my inbox and try to find people and keep notes all over my computer. And it was an absolute mess. So the next thing that I did was I took and I white labeled a support system, which included a page that looks just like the one that I brought up here on my screen. And then this basically has, this is my business partner, Jamar. We actually used, reused this uh, framework for another, for our other brand, Digital Marketing Misfits. But this is basically the template. So someone would come to a page here which says, the support portal, I had a picture here explaining the support options, and this was really important. We have the submit the ticket button. People could click this, and they could actually submit a ticket and have a recording of the what they were the issue that they were facing. This was very, very important. I also gave them a billing portal question uh, form here because that was another thing. People wanted to change their credit cards. They wanted to get receipts, and that was something that was taking up a lot of my time, giving me a lot of stress. So I put a button on the page here so they could go right into their self-billing portal. That, that actually cleared up a lot of support tickets for me as well. Now, when someone submits a support ticket, it went into a simple pipeline like this. Uh, people who would come in, I'm not gonna bring anybody's uh, information up on screen, but there would be little boxes that would pop up in this far left column here when they submitted. I was able to drag them, let them know who I was working on the issue, what was resolved, and it kept everything, all of the conversations, it kept everything in the one little box, all the notes stayed very, very organized. But with 38 people emailing me around the clock, this wasn't quite enough to support that customer load. And it certainly wasn't going to be enough for me to support up to 2000. And at this point I was at a crossroads. So I had to make a decision on whether or not I was going to hire somebody in-house full time or go and outsource it with a third party company. Now at this time I had only hired a video editor before and the thought of actually trying to set up a live chat because this is the next step was having people live chat around the clock. I would have to have multiple people across multiple time zones. And that means that I would hire, have to hire multiple people and have a big team. And that would have been a lot of expense and money that I really didn't have to spend on a team. And that's when I found Extendly. Now Extendly is a service that they actually have hired a team of VAs all around the world. I was recommended to them by somebody inside the high level official community. And for $500 a month, they would service all of my clients, whether I had 200 or I had 2000, it was a flat rate of $500. And I was sold because it wasn't just the live chat support that they offer, they actually offer a white labeled knowledge base and searchable help docs as well. And inside the system, it looks something like this. Now, what happens is, is the uh, this little get help button here on the bottom, this is Extendly. All I have to do is click on that and it's gonna pop a blurb. And what this basically has, this is all customizable. I can make it all customized to my brand. And then over here, there's actually a live chat. It starts with an AI bot that's there, but if I wanna chat with an agent, they have a response time of about a minute. And whether it's 2 a.m. or seven in the morning or it's whatever time o'clock, there's somebody on standby to help who's actually going to help my customers get through all the technical stuff. And if they have to, they're gonna hop on a Zoom call with someone to work out a technical issue. And at the end of the month, I get a nice little report saying who got helped. And in addition to chat, 
They also have the knowledge base. If you hit the help button, these are all searchable help docs, but I've also linked it over here into the inside here. If we go here into help docs, it frames it. It's gonna load it right inside. And you'll see it here, it's all nicely branded and it's going to be, uh, it's searchable. So if I wanna go, let's say websites, I wanna learn how to build a website. I can click on website and it gives me, a, it gives my customer a tutorial on how to actually build a website and there's all written uh, articles on how to do all of this. This saved me a ton of time, but this by itself is worth the investment in my opinion because they keep it updated, they keep it up to date with snapshots and it's time I don't have to spend maintaining a knowledge base because every time the interface changes, I would have to refilm all of my videos. I'd rather just pay somebody $500 a month for the chat and the knowledge base and be done with it. And that's where I think I'm gonna end the video today. It's getting a little bit long, uh, but I wanted to touch on support. I wanted to touch on onboarding, what I'm doing, how I got here. And in the next couple videos, we're gonna talk about how I sell this one to many using a webinar, how I actually package my new offer because I offer a lot more than just the SaaS plan. And we can also talk about creating a community forum for all of my users to hang out and co-mingle in one place. And if you want all of this information in more of a click by click kind of a course format, I'm gonna leave a link to a free course down below showing you how to set up your very own high level SaaS plan. And if you wanna check out any of the resources I mentioned in the video, I'll leave links to all of them down below there in the description. You can check them out. And again, be sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be documenting my journey all the way to 2000 users, however long it takes. And with that said, feel free to check out one of the videos up here in the corners. I will see you in the next video.